So now we're able to start with neural networks. Neural networks is actually a really simple concept. It's the idea of taking linear uh, units, arraying them in layers, and then stacking them on top of each other. So in this part of the lecture, we just want to go through the terminology so that you understand how the terminology and topology of a neural network go together. So let's start with this diagram, right? So we're going to have our usual column vector um, this time of a dimension d and we're going to add a bias term right this is our x0 okay we're not going to actually observe it we're just going to stick it there artificially because as you can see where the arrows are pointing we're going to use that in the actual classifier okay the layers the linear units to uh, move the hyperplanes that are coming from each individual unit off of the origin Okay, so what we're going to do is have a number of uh, hidden units or, or linear units, okay, and we're going to array them in layers, layer 1, layer 2, in this case layer 3, because we have uh, three layers here, so it just says uh, right here, okay, we have a capital L number of layers, and they're just indexed um, in natural numbers. Okay. And the final layer is going to be an output layer that's actually going to calculate our actual uh, hypothesis, right? So uh, the internals of the hidden layers are doing something, and then the final layer is taking all of that information and then aggregating it together, and then outputting the actual hypothesis, right? So here, instead of having a small theta, we have a large theta because we actually have an entire tensor of uh, weights, right? Not just a, a single... Uh, vector. Okay. And uh, previously, we had to go through um, a mapping function, we're going to call it an activation function here, which is going to help us um, take multiple layers of linear units and use them together to get something uh, more than the sum of its parts. Why do we need that? Because if we stick stack uh, linear layers on top of each other, when we add them together, we get another linear layer, right? The problem here is that when we add uh, hyperplanes together, we end up in uh, the space of the original hypothesis class, another hyperplane. So we need a nonlinear unit to be able to, uh, sorry, a nonlinear activation function to be able to uh, compose these hyperplanes together in some more powerful way somewhat similar to what you saw in KNN, where even a one nearest neighbor concept allows you to take many line segments and array them together. Okay, so we saw this idea of uh, introducing a nonlinearity before. It was in our logistic regression uh, lecture, where we used the logistic function, right? So the logistic function maps our signal, which we're going to write on the x-axis here, from negative infinity to positive infinity, and companding that between 0 and 1, right? So that we could interpret it as a probability. But what we really need to do here, as we saw in the XR part of the lecture, is to cater for inputs that are not just positive numbers, but also negative ones as well. So we're going to say that the output of our classifier, each linear unit, can go from negative 1 to positive 1. And we have a nice uh, mathematical formula for that, right? We have a function called the hyperbolic tangent, which achieves exactly that. So it still has this compounding property of mapping positive and negative infinity into a small uh, interval between uh, unity and negative unity. So one of the important things about neural networks is the indices. So we're going to take a look at this diagram to understand that. So uh, for example, let's take a look at the first layer, right? So the first layer here, uh, layer one, has a number of weights associated with it. Now the weights are actually associated with the um, layer before, right? The layer before is actually our input in this case. So all we're getting is the um, information from uh, this column of uh, uh, arrows here. And the way we index uh, our uh, network architecture is we use the square superscript for denoting the layer and the two indices that are subscripts for denoting which edge that's coming into this layer, okay? So the first one index that we have is for which index 
in the layer that we're talking about, right? So this is the first layer, uh, sorry, the first node, the second node, the first, third node. So this one corresponds to this one here. And then we need to say where that edge is coming from. Where is this arrow coming from? Well, it's coming from the bias term, right? So it's going to be uh, uh, input zero, okay? And then we can do the same thing for this red arrow down here. So this is at layer two. So this is why I have this index. It happens to be the zero, one, two, second unit. Okay, so that's our uh, two here. And it happens to be coming from the third unit from the previous layer. Okay, so it's important here to remember that uh, a neural network has a tensor of weights, right? It's three dimensional because I have three indices, right? Each particular uh, layer can have a different number of edges. Like you can see here, layer two and layer one have different number of edges. So we can read this statement. If a network has a certain number of units, let's say um, at layer one, has uh, um, four units here. So I have uh, zero, one, two, three units here, right? Uh, including the bias. And um, certain number of units at the next layer. So we're talking about layer two here, okay? Then uh, the tensor slice, right? The matrix of values uh, that are our weights will be of this dimensionality, right? So we have uh, three units, okay, in layer one, right? And I have to add one for the bias, okay? And I have two units at layer two, layer two, okay? So I should have a total of eight weights here. So you can see that I have uh, four weights in blue and another four weights in red. So like I said earlier, we are taking all of these inputs, these edges, and then sending them through a activation function. Okay, we're gonna call these activation functions A, and they're denoted basically by some type of nonlinear activation function, which we're gonna call G, okay, that's taking the, uh, the dot product, the sum of the dot products of all of the weights uh, coming from the edges and uh, the associated node that outputted uh, the information. Okay, we're gonna add those all together and then put them through the nonlinearity, right? So our G function here could be the hyperbolic tangent. Later, when we go to deep learning, uh, you're going to see another function uh, for nonlinearity, which is even simpler which is called the ReLU, okay? But uh, for right now, uh, let's not worry about that. For our neural network lecture, our uh, G function is just going to be hyperbolic tangent, okay? And you can see how this works. Basically, we have the uh, same thing, which is a, a dot product, uh, adding all of the terms together, putting them through the nonlinearity, and that will be the activation. So in this part of the lecture, you're going to see uh, activation and X used interchangeably. It actually doesn't matter a whole lot, okay? When we use it for a layer that's inside of the network, the X represents the output after the nonlinearity or uh, G function is applied to it, okay? We can denote it either as X or as A. All right, let's go write down the formula for how the neural network operates. Right, we're going to start with a particular output at layer L. Okay, that's an L there. And we're going to say that uh, we have a particular index I that we're trying to calculate the inputs for, right? So how does it work? We're going to go back and think about uh, how it relates to the ones that are coming in the previous layer. Now the previous layer are the inputs, they're going to be denoted as J, like the same thing that we saw before. And they're coming from the previous layer, so we're going to write L minus one, okay? And these, all of these J uh, nodes are going to be multiplied times uh, our coefficient, right? Our, mate, uh, our weight, which is going to be indexed um, to the I, which is the one that we're outputting, okay? Um, and it's going to be notated with uh, layer L, right? So we actually have to add these all together. This is the dot product, and we're gonna sum up all the dot products for all of the inputs from 
uh, the bias term all the way up to uh, the dimensionality of that layer, right, which is L minus 1. Okay, so that's great. We have this. This is our signal. Okay, this is our S. And we're going to put it through our nonlinearity, right, which we are going to talk about a little bit more over here. Okay, and uh, we can denote that as uh, basically the output, right? So this is, uh, again, what we might say is the activation function uh, output at layer L. Okay, and uh, this G that we are talking about right um, here, the hyperbolic tangent here, has this nice uh, property where on the outsides, right, it behaves like uh, a hard threshold, right? It's either very close to one or very close to negative one, okay? But in the regime where it's actually very close to zero, it behaves like a, a linear uh, uh, line. Right. This is very nice because even though we want this idea of a hard threshold that we saw in the XOR case, we want something that's a smooth function that might be twice differentiable so that we can get a gradient from it. Right. So this is very important. So the hyperbolic tangent as well as the logistic function both have this very nice property where it acts like a hard threshold but very close to zero. Depending on how you set the parameters here, you can get it to be very sloped. So here we've summarized this for you on this slide, and you can see where we're going with this. We can do this type of uh, computation for each layer, and we're just going to take the input vector that we had before, and then keep on feeding it, feeding it, feeding it, feeding it for all of the layers. This is why it's called a feed-forward network also, okay? And then arriving at the final ultimate layer, the one that's actually going to be responsible for outputting the classification which is our hypothesis. Now, many of you were asking before, how do we do multiple uh, classification when we have more than a binary set? Well, uh, this is one way to do it is in a neural network just to have multiple final units, right? Instead of having a single output, right? We're going to say we have, uh, uh, you know, a number of outputs, one for each different class that we might be trying to get. Okay, so for example, here we have the Satosa iris, the Versicolor iris, and the uh, Virginica iris. So we have three different irises here. And so we can assign a uh, output node at the final layer, at our layer L, uh, to cater for that, right? And so what we want to do is make sure that we have outputs that are in the form of a vector, where the one indicates the correct classification, and the negative ones indicate uh, uh, incorrect classifications or uh, classifications that are negative, right? So we want to basically try to get the neural network to output this vector of values for a particular input, right? So in the case where it's a setosa, we want the first um, unit to be positive and the rest to be negative. In the case of versicolor, we'd have the second unit be positive. And in the case of the third, uh, of Virginica iris, we want the third and final uh, component of this vector to be positive. Okay?